I asked you in my last video what you wanted this video to be about. Most of you said you wanted to know how to handle unwanted jumping with your dog. Now consider sharing this because one of the original points of frustration for new pet parents is the fact that their dog jumps on them when they don't want them to. Huge problem, easy solution. First, understand that the root cause of most unwanted jumping is lack of physical exercise, mental activities, and or overall communication. Asking a dog to not jump on you who has a lot of energy and not a proper outlet is bordering on unreasonable. This is a real puppy behavior. Do you see how he's grabbing on a leash? He wants to play tug. He's turning down turkey meat to play tug of war with a leash. That's a play-driven dog. Your dog should know how to sit and stay pretty solidly before teaching them not to jump on you. If you need help with that, I will We'll have videos in the description. Uh, either way, I promise you'll have a much better idea as to how to deal with unwanted jumping over the next several minutes. Make sure you click the subscribe button right now so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. I mean, why not? It's free. How many of your dogs jump when you don't want them to? Let's talk about why dogs jump to begin with. There's a lot of common myths out there about dog training that it's dominant, so that's your dog trying to be in control. It's the exact opposite. A lot of unwanted behaviors like this are often attributed to a dog trying to be dominant. The reality is dogs are very often very physical and playful beings. This has nothing to do with them trying to gain some type of status within your family. They jump because dogs like to greet us at the face. That's how dogs say hello and I love you to other life forms. That's how they shake hands. That's how they greet us. Nonetheless, it can be pretty obnoxious. The golden rule with jumping is it's your responsibility as a parent to make sure that your dog is not getting any attention from anybody unless all four feet are on the ground. When your dog does something you like or don't like, it's important that you react quickly and tell them so. If you're not reacting instantly and your dog's doing something you don't like, they learn that they can get away with it for a certain period of time before you're gonna do something about it. They're like, all right, I can jump a little bit at least. I've been allowed to do that. It is vital that you have the right frame of mind when teaching your dog. You can never train a dog when you're in a hurry or when you're frustrated. Your choices are to be sincere and patient. But if you're sincere and patient, your dog will learn at light speed, guys. There are two main types of jumping. There's the kind of jumping where they jump on you, and there's a the kind of jumping where they jump on somebody else. Let's talk about how we deal with them jumping on us first. The traditional advice on this is when your dog jumps on you, you cross your arms and you turn around. Okay, that's fine, and that's cool, and you should do that. But what's missing from that traditional advice is that you need to have some feeling behind it. You need to have some communication with them. You've got to do this in your own individual way. Look into your dog's eyes often when you're training them. Her eyes will get all wide and she'll say, I'm about to jump him. I'm sorry, he's a boy. All of your dogs know, sit, stay. You're not going to be overly firm with them because that can be a bit counterproductive. Use treats in the beginning, that is ideal. When I see that he's thinking about breaking, you're out of there quickly. I'm instantly removing myself. With a severe jumper, you come in like this, really slow. My goal here is to just try and touch her on the head without her jumping. Uh-uh. Be one step ahead of them. The closer I get, the more tempting it is for him. The best time to correct an unwanted behavior is right before it occurs. It's important that when our dog jumps on us that there is a consequence. The consequence in this case is simply removing our body from them so they can't jump on it. No, 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 no. I want him to know getting up made me get way far away from you because you were thinking about jumping. And see, he's going into a down because he, he really wants to interact with me. He's a very happy dog. I will communicate with her. Hey, Mia, how are you? Sit. Very, uh, uh, don't jump. Very good. Yes, that's good. Pet them very softly in order to encourage them to be calm. If you have a really excited dog, using treats might actually encourage them to be a bit more calm as well. Because all she wants is some interaction. Yes! I touched her, I'm gonna give her a treat. Uh -uh. And I haven't been able to touch him yet. Again, the goal here is to be able to touch him. Yes, good, do you see that? I'm gonna jackpot him right there. I'm gonna give him a massive treat because he did really, really good. Jackpot is a term we dog trainers use to mean a giant reward when they really reach deep to do something. That was really good, guys. Over time, as your dog learns, they will remember that in order to receive attention, they need to keep all four feet on the ground. Here I saw in Sully's eyes that he was receptive to staying in order to be pet, so I thought I would test his willpower a bit. Yes, 
Look, did you see the restraint right there? Some of us like it when our dogs jump on us from time to time. I certainly do. You can have it both ways. If you ask them to jump, it's fine. They're perfectly capable of knowing that it's okay to jump only when you say it's okay. If your dog is extra amped up, say after you've returned home from work after several hours, you may need to have them in another room, like a bedroom, or let them in the backyard to run around a bit, to get some of that energy out. That way they're more receptive to learning this concept. But what do we do when our dogs jump on friends, family, or strangers? Tell me if this sounds familiar. You're walking down the street with your dog. You see a friend approaching you. You wanna stop and talk to them. Your dog's jumping all over them. And you're saying, no, no, no. And you're trying to maintain somewhat of a conversation. And you're like, hey, how's it going? Stop jumping, stop jumping. Oh, how you been? So you're giving 50% of your attention to your dog and 50% to the person. So your attention is divided, isn't it? You gotta pick your dog in this case. Guys, it is totally okay to say, I'm sorry, I'm trying to teach my dog not to jump. Sit, stay. Then you do this with the other person. Other person, will you please pet my dog? If your dog then goes to jump, as they will initially, we don't expect them to do anything. It's not their fault. They're not doing anything wrong. They're just trying to pet your dog. You're in between that person and your dog. Every time they jump, you're right there. Sit, stay. Only then does the person pet your dog when all four feet are on the ground. Our overall demeanor and attitude should suggest to our dogs, you're not going to jump and also get pet at the same time. Does that make sense? A lot of old fashioned ways for dealing with unwanted jumping are still recommended today by many dog trainers. Things like kneeing them in the chest when they jump or pulling back by a leash and collar in order to show them who's boss. These approaches tend to really trivialize the sophisticated intellect of our dogs. Use that opportunity to really make them think the more you physically make your dog do something, the less effective your training will be because it's not coming from the inside out. If you just are a little patient with them and you encourage them to perform the behavior voluntarily, you'll get much better results. I really try and give you a lot of different examples so that you can get a true sense as to how to deal with your dog on this particular issue. Now, realistically, it takes a few weeks of being very consistent on this with them in order for them to really start to get the behavior. If you find videos and tips like this helpful, you can tell me so by clicking thumbs up. And I'm also gonna let you decide what my next video is going to be about. Would you rather see four-month-old Lexi, the German Shepherd dog, learn how to stay at the doorway so she doesn't run into the street or would you rather see six-month-old Nina learning how to walk on a leash without pulling? Tell me in the comments below. Also, like me on Facebook where I post my secret dog training advice videos and lots of other fun stuff as well. Okay, guys, tell me in the comments below what you want to see, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.